Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Hope you all are fine. Welcome to our Mishkat International Dawa Organization, Mido. Today we are going to learn about very important topic Laylatul Qadr. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the Worlds, and peace and blessings be upon the trustworthy Prophet Muhammad and upon all his family and companions. The Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him used to strive hard in worship during the last 10 days of Ramadan in a way that he did not strive at any other times. Muslim, 1175, from Aisha. Among the things he did were secluding himself in Ayatikaf and seeking Laylat al-Qadr during this time. Al-Bukhari, 1913, Muslim, 1169. In Al-Sahayahain it is reported from the Hadith of, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that when the last ten days of Ramadan came, the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, would stay up at night, wake his family and gird his loins. Al-Bukhari, 1920, Muslim, 1174. Muslim added, he strove hard and girded his loins. Her phrase, girded his loins, is a metaphor for his preparing himself to worship and strive hard in worship, more than usual. It has the meaning of, rolling up one's sleeves, to worship, i.e. getting ready to make a great deal of effort, it was also said that it was a metaphor for keeping away from women and abstaining from sexual relations. The phrase, stay up at night, means that he would stay awake, spending the night in prayer, etc. It was reported in another hadith that, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I never saw the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him recite the entire Quran in one night, or spend a whole night in prayer until the morning, or fast an entire month, except in Ramadan. Sunan al Nasai, 1641. The words, stay up at night, may mean that he spent most of the night in worship, or that he did not stay up for the entire night, but he did that at the times of, Isha and Sahor, and other times, in which case it would mean that he stayed up for most of the night. The phrase, and wake his family, means that he would wake his wives to pray Qiyam. It is known that he peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to wake his wives all year round, but he used to wake them to spend part of the night in Qiyam. In Sahaya al-Bukhari it is reported that the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, woke up one night and said, Subhan Allah. What tribulations have come down tonight? What treasure has come down tonight? Who will wake up the dwellers of the apartments? There may be women who are clothed in this world and naked in the hereafter. Al-Bukhari, 1074. It was also reported, in Sahaya al-Bukhari, that he, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to wake. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, when he wanted to pray with her. Al-Bukhari, 952. But when he woke his wives during the last ten nights of Ramadan, this was more persistent than at other times of the year. The fact that he peace and blessings of Allah be upon him did this indicates the importance he attached to worshipping his Lord and making the most of this special time. The Muslim should follow the example of the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him for he is the best example, and he should strive hard in worshipping Allah. He should not waste the hours of these days and nights. For we do not know, perhaps this time will never come again, for the spoiler of pleasures, i.e., death, which must come to all men, may come and snatch him and his life will end. Then he will feel regret at the time when regret will be of no avail. Among the unique virtues of these special nights is that Laylat al-Qadr is among them. Allah says, interpretation of the meaning, ha amin. These letters are one of the miracles of the Quran and none but Allah alone knows their meanings. By the manifest book this Quran, that makes things clear. We sent it this Quran down on a blessed night, i.e. the night of Al-Qadr in the month of Ramadan. Verily, we are ever warning mankind that our torment will reach those who disbelieve in our oneness of lordship and in our oneness of worship therein, that night is decreed every matter of ordainments, as a command, or this Quran or the decree of every matter, from us. Verily, we are ever sending, the messengers, as, a mercy from your Lord. Verily, he is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. Al-Duhan 44. 1-6, Allah sent down the Quran on this night which the Lord of the Worlds has described as blessed. It was reported from a group of the Salaf, 
including Ibn Abbas, Qutada, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Ikrimah, Muha'ahid and others, that the night on which the Quran was sent down was Laylat al-Qadr. The phrase therein, that night, is decreed every matter of ordainments means, on that night the destiny of all creatures for the coming year is decreed. On that night it is written who will live, who will die, who will be saved, who will be doomed, who will be destined for paradise, who will be destined for hell, who will be granted honor, who will be humiliated, where drought and famine will occur, and everything else that Allah wills in that year. The fact that he peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, did this indicates the importance he attached to worshipping his Lord and making the most of this special time. The Muslim should follow the example of the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, for he is the best example, and he should strive hard in worshipping Allah. He should not waste the hours of these days and nights. For we do not know, perhaps this time will never come again, for the spoiler of pleasures, i.e., death, which must come to all men, may come and snatch him and his life will end. Then he will feel regret at the time when regret will be of no avail. Among the unique virtues of these special nights is that Laylat al-Qadr is among them. Allah says, interpretation of the meaning, ha amin. These letters are one of the miracles of the Quran and none but Allah, alone, knows their meanings. By the manifest book this Quran, that makes things clear. We sent it this Quran down on a blessed night, i.e. the night of Al-Qadr in the month of Ramadan. Verily, we are ever warning mankind that our torment will reach those who disbelieve in our oneness of lordship and in our oneness of worship therein, that night is decreed every matter of ordainments, as a command, or this Quran or the decree of every matter, from us. Verily, we are ever sending, the messengers, as, a mercy from your Lord. Verily, he is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. Al-Duhan 44. 1-6 Allah sent down the Quran on this night which the Lord of the Worlds has described as blessed. It was reported from a group of the Salaf, including Ibn Abbas, Qutada, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Ikrimah, Muha'ahid and others, that the night on which the Quran was sent down was Laylat al-Qadr. The phrase therein, that night, is decreed every matter of ordainments means, on that night the destiny of all creatures for the coming year is decreed. On that night it is written who will live, who will die, who will be saved, who will be doomed, who will be destined for paradise, who will be destined for hell, who will be granted honor, who will be humiliated, where drought and famine will occur, and everything else that Allah wills in that year. Allah forgives the previous sins of the one who stays up and prays during this night out of faith and in hope of earning the reward from him. It was reported in the Hadith of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, all his previous sins will be forgiven, and whoever stays up during Laylat al-Qadr out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Agreed upon. The phrase, out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, means, believing in Allah's promise of reward for this, and seeking the reward, with no other aim or purpose, such as showing off etc. Fath al-Bari. 4251 Allah has revealed a surah concerning this night which will be recited until the day of resurrection, in which he mentions the honor and great value of this night. This is the surah in which he says, interpretation of the meaning, verily, we have sent it this Quran down in the night of Al-Qadr decree, and what will make you know what the night of Al-Qadr decree is? The night of Al-Qadr decree is better than a thousand months, i.e. worshipping Allah in that night is better than worshipping him a thousand months, i.e. 83 years and four months therein descend the angels and the root Jibreel by Allah's permission with all decrees, all that night there is peace and goodness from Allah to his believing slaves, until the appearance of dawn. Al-Qadr 97 1 to 5 The phrase and what will make you know what the night of Al Qadr decree is. Serves to draw attention to the importance and great significance of this night. The night of Al Qadr decree is better than a thousand months means, it is better than over 83 years, as we have already mentioned. This is a great virtue, the value of which no one can fully understand except the Lord of the worlds, may he be blessed and exalted.
This encourages the Muslim to spend this night in prayer and to seek the face of Allah by doing so. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to seek this night, hoping to gain some good from it, and he is the example for this Ummah. It is mustahab to seek it, during Ramadan, especially in the last ten nights of the month. It was reported in Sahaya Muslim that Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him did ayatikaf during the first ten days of Ramadan, then he did ayatikaf during the middle ten days in a Turkish tent the word kubba, translated here as, tent, refers to a tent or any circular structure in which a mat was placed. He said, so he took the mat in his hand and put it at the side of the tent, then he raised his head to speak to the people, so they came closer to him. He said, I did ayatikaf during the first ten days, seeking this night, then I did ayatikaf during the middle ten days. Then someone came to me and told me that it is in the last ten days, so whoever among you wants to do ayatikaf, let him do so. So the people did ayatikaf with him. He said, I was shown an odd-numbered night, in the morning of which I was prostrating in mud and water. Then in the morning of the twenty-first, he got up to pray sub and it was raining, the roof of the mosque leaked, and there was mud and water. He came out when he had finished praying, and there was mud and water on his forehead and nose. That was the morning of the 21st, one of the last 10 days. Sahaya Muslim, 1167, in a report, Abu Sa'id said, It rained on the night of the 21st, and the roof of the mosque leaked over the place where the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was praying. I looked at him, when he had finished praying Salat al-Sud, and his face was wet with mud and water, agreed upon. Muslim narrated a hadith from, Abd Allah ibn Unais, may Allah be pleased with him, that was similar to the hadith of Abu Sa'id, except that he said, it rained on the night of the 23rd. According to a hadith narrated by Ibn, Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten days of Ramadan, when there are nine days left, and seven days left, and five days left. Narrated by al-Bukhari, 4 260ths. It is mustahab to seek it, during Ramadan, especially in the last ten nights of the month. It was reported in Sahaya Muslim that Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, did ayatikaf during the first ten days of Ramadan, then he did ayatikaf during the middle ten days in a Turkish tent, the word kubba, translated here as, tent, refers to a tent or any circular structure, in which a mat was placed. He said, so he took the mat in his hand and put it at the side of the tent, then he raised his head to speak to the people, so they came closer to him. He said, I did ayatikaf during the first ten days, seeking this night, then I did ayatikaf during the middle ten days. Then someone came to me and told me that it is in the last ten days, so whoever among you wants to do ayatikaf, let him do so. So the people did ayatikaf with him. He said, I was shown an odd-numbered night, in the morning of which I was prostrating in mud and water. Then in the morning of the twenty-first, he got up to pray sub and it was raining, the roof of the mosque leaked, and there was mud and water. He came out when he had finished praying, and there was mud and water on his forehead and nose. That was the morning of the 21st, one of the last 10 days. Sahaya Muslim, 1167, in a report, Abu Sa'id said, It rained on the night of the 21st, and the roof of the mosque leaked over the place where the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was praying. I looked at him, when he had finished praying Salat al-Sub, and his face was wet with mud and water, agreed upon. Muslim narrated a hadith from, Abd Allah ibn Unais, may Allah be pleased with him, that was similar to the hadith of Abu Sa'id, except that he said, it rained on the night of the 23rd. According to a hadith narrated by Ibn, Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten days of Ramadan, when there are nine days left, and seven days left, and five days left. Narrated by al-Bukhari, 4 260ths. It is mustahab to seek it, during Ramadan, especially in the last ten nights of the month.
It was reported in Sahaya Muslim that Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, did ayatikaf during the first ten days of Ramadan. Then he did ayatikaf during the middle ten days in a Turkish tent, the word Kaaba, translated here as, tent, refers to a tent or any circular structure, in which a mat was placed. He said, so he took the mat in his hand and put it at the side of the tent, then he raised his head to speak to the people, so they came closer to him. He said, I did ayatikaf during the first ten days, seeking this night, then I did ayatikaf during the middle ten days. Then someone came to me and told me that it is in the last ten days, so whoever among you wants to do ayatikaf, let him do so. So the people did ayatikaf with him. He said, I was shown an odd-numbered night, in the morning of which I was prostrating in mud and water. Then in the morning of the 21st, he got up to pray soup and it was raining, the roof of the mosque leaked, and there was mud and water. He came out when he had finished praying, and there was mud and water on his forehead and nose. That was the morning of the 21st, one of the last 10 days. Sahaya Muslim, 1167, in a report, Abu Sa'id said, it rained on the night of the 21st, and the roof of the mosque leaked over the place where the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was praying. I looked at him, when he had finished praying Salat al sub and his face was wet with mud and water, agreed upon. Muslim narrated a hadith from, Abd Allah ibn Unayz, may Allah be pleased with him, that was similar to the hadith of Abu Sa'id, except that he said, it rained on the night of the 23rd. According to a hadith narrated by Ibn, Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten days of Ramadan, when there are nine days left, and seven days left, and five days left. Narrated by Al-Bukhari, 4 260th. Alhamdulillah here we conclude our today's topic. Share this lecture as much as you can so others will also get benefit from it inshallah. Jazakumalahu Kairan, Asalaam Alaikum Waramatullahi Wabrakatuhu.